Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for on-site training, code reviews, and contracting. So a couple of weeks ago, I sent out this tweet saying, I am working on a new project and this is a test from that project. I have const expert auto run and then a bunch of 8-bit values and then I say static assert read byte 101 equals equals 12 and who knows exactly what it is doing. In this episode, I am going to explain what it is doing. And if you couldn't have already guessed from the title of the episode, this is evaluating some ARM instructions at compile time, storing the result of the system into a const expert variable, and then static asserting, so at compile time, asserting that the code that we executed is in fact doing what we wanted it to do. So you already know the end of the story. This is a compile time ARM emulator, effectively. But what I would like to point out is that I did not set out to make a const expert ARM emulator. Instead, I just set out to make an ARM emulator. And I wanted to use this as a test case for all of the best practices that I teach, using const expert where you can using no except where it is appropriate, consting everything that you possibly can. And I wanted to see just kind of what would happen. And before I realized it fully, I was about halfway through having something working. And I realized, well, if I want to process an instruction, and as you can see, I have all of this running in a local instance of the Compiler Explorer at the moment, but if I have this function called process and I have some instruction type and I want to do a switch on it and then handle that instruction properly, well, there's no reason why this particular function can't be const expert. All I'm going to be doing is manipulating some local memory and some registers because that's all that a CPU really is, all that a computer really is, for the most part, is something that has access to memory and registers when we're talking about modern von Neumann kind of typical systems. So I said, well, this can be const expert. I think there's no reason why it couldn't be. And if I were to implement my data processing function here, which is one of the overall instruction types in the ARM architecture, then, well, I just need to get what registers I'm going to be working on, the first operand and the second operand, and what bits get carried, and then I need to execute these things. And I can set up some lambdas like I have here in a const expert context. They are allowed now in C17. And I have another lambda here. So I set up a couple of generic lambdas for myself that do the right thing. And then I just have, again, another switch statement where I'm testing to see what kind of an opcode this is. Is this an and, an exclusive or, a test, a test of equal, an or, a move, whatever. Then I just implement these things and I call the appropriate lambda function here or if it is something that is an arithmetic operation, then I can do that like this. And all of these things can be const expert. They don't need to dynamically allocate memory. They don't need to throw or catch exceptions. So let's make them all const expert. And they are also not going to ever throw an exception. So basically, every function in this ended up being const expert, no except, which then led me to writing some test for it. And this is the specific test that was in that tweet. And hopefully the size of the font is good, but if you can't see all the details, that's probably fine also. But I have here my const expert thing, and I, and I named it thing for the sake of the tweet so that it wasn't obvious what I was doing. But each of these bytes is just part of the instruction stream that it's executing. And the arm is little Indian, so this is E9, OO, and we're going backward, AO, E3. So I'd had to reverse all of the bytes in each instruction that's being executed. And the arm is a risk architecture, and it has exactly 32 bits per instruction. It is impossible for an instruction to be bigger than that or smaller than that. And that is one of the things that makes it relatively easy for me to do in a kind of compile time context. So in this particular case, um, 
what we are doing is we are moving the value 233 into the register 0, and then we're moving the value 12 into the register 1. Now an interesting thing about ARM is since it can only have 32 bits per instruction, it's not possible to load any arbitrary value into any 32-bit register. So the ultimate value that I wanted was 1001, and to do that we had to do 233 and then a bitwise OR of the value 768, which can be represented in the ARM, and this is all very interesting because there's only a certain number of bits assigned to literals and then a shift, and we can jump into what that looks like but we have our bitwise OR in here, and then we ultimately get the value that we want of 1001, and then we are saying we want to store the value that is in R1 into the memory location pointed to by R0, and then since this is, um, then we're returning from this block of code, we're just clearing R0, and then we are using this command here to return from this block of code back to where the program counter was previously. So I have some logic in here to know when the snippet of code is exited and it comes back to some predefined location where I expect the program counter to be, then I know to stop execution. So I execute the six simple 32-bit instructions and then I can do a static assert to see that I actually did assign the value at the memory location 1001 equal to 12. And so the first thing that you might ask is, well, all of this context for stuff is crazy, but it can add significantly to compile times. And so I just want to point out that, again, I didn't set out to make a context for ARM emulator. It's just what happened by following uh, the kinds of things that I talk about in conference talks and what I teach. So if I wanted to say, well, I want to verify that register 1 is actually equal to the value 12 for the sake of my test here. I can type that in and it can compile pretty fast. This is actually being slowed down by the fact that I am recording this video at the same time without the recording running. It is about two times faster than this and from the sake of manipulating this on Compiler Explorer, it is about as fast as I can type. Pretty much by the time I am done writing the statement and then Compile Explorer executes it, then I get the result here. And we can see that our code is continuing to compile. Now we might add in another test where we want to say, well, we expect register 0 to be equal to 1001 because we know we were doing a offset into 1001 and indirection into there front via our register 0. But we get a compiler error here this static assertion has failed because we overlooked the fact that R0 is being reset to the value 0 when the program has been executed. So I can put this static assert back in and say, oh yes, correct, we want this to actually be equal to 0. And um, that had a already cached result, but it finished uh, compiling that rather quickly. And you can access this in my GitHub repository at lefticus slash arm thing if you are interested in contributing to this at all and enhancing the arm support. I am aiming for like arm v3, arm v4, something very early. I do not want to get terribly complicated. I do want to add hardware FPU support so that we don't have to implement the soft uh, FPU functions. And if you're interested in the tests that I have, I do have this set of contexts for test. And the, all these tests must compile for me to even consider this as a good build at all. And this is very interesting because having these compile time tests in here actually uh, ensure that you're not doing things like invalid memory accesses because you can't. You cannot inv invoke undefined behavior in a context per context that is an ill-formed program. So by having these context per test, we are ensuring that we're not invoking undefined behavior in our emulator. So um, thank you for joining me in this episode, and be sure to follow me on Twitter, subscribe, and comment on any of the links at the end of this video, and check out this project, which is again at lefticus slash arm underscore thing.